this episode, we are doing a drum to disc brake conversion. No. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods and let's leave that crappy electro music exactly where it belongs and let's get all analog with it. Martin, let's get acoustic. All right. Let's get all, all disky about it. Okay. So tell us what we're going to do and I'll lay you down some fat beats on this tom. Hit it. Today, we are going to be removing the drum brakes from Too Sexy and we're going to be applying some disc brakes. People have been asking for years. They have been asking about this for years. It's a really cool upgrade if you want to go to the track, um, if you like disc brakes more for whatever reason. But we're going to go through the difference between the two as well and talk about why one is better than the other but not in all situations. Now Martin, a few people might be wondering what this is. This is a floppy disc. Except it's not floppy. And inside it is. That's why they're called floppy. No, because the old ones were floppy. Oh, but no, they were the big ones. Yeah, they were floppy. But, but anyway, just for the kids, um, this here is 1.4 megabytes of data, which means you'd fit around 500 of these on a CD, um, around a few thousand of them on a DVD, and that probably represents around just a couple of frames of your special video collection that you keep in the cupboard. Um, that's a floppy disk. It is. Is that of any value to you? Do you need it? Uh, well, you want to break it? Oh, I don't want to break it. But do you need it? Uh, I guess not. I just wanted to throw it over that way and see if I could aim it right at the people. Do you reckon I could hit them right in the eyeball? I reckon you could probably hurt them. If not, then hurt the camera. All right, let's try. Are you ready? Let's do anyway, it. Anyway, let's begin. Wow, that was terrible. You missed, but that is an awesome frisbee. Let's begin, Martin. Let's do it. Now, drum brakes actually work really well and they do what they're meant to do. So why, you might be wondering, would you want to change them to disc brakes? Well, one of the reasons is that drum brakes get really hot. They're an enclosed system, the shoes are inside the big drum thing and if you're continuously beating the crap out of them, which you're really not likely to do on the street if you're just driving to the shops, but if you're on the track, then you may overheat them and then they stop working, they fade and then you've got no braking. Yeah, but under normal conditions they obviously work really well, which is why manufacturers still continue to use them. But we thought that we would show this kind of incredibly thoroughly scientific um, example of how they work. So Martin, would you like to do that? Alright, so you're rolling down the road to go get your dirty yep. or your dirty chicken or your dirty burger. Um, and we don't want to make any claims about any of that food actually being dirty. No. That, we were just saying that as a like matter of speech. What it's I mean is you, very clean. you dropped it and then it fell in the dirt. Yeah, but it might have lots of oil and stuff in it. So this is the shoe It's just chilling. It's just chilling because your foot's yep. not on the brakes. But now you press the button, Martin, and... Oh, yep. look, it's slowing it down. But there's another shoe over there as well. There's another shoe on the other side. Keep, oh, let's try and... Let's just get scientific, Martin. Oh, man, this smells. No. <laughs> we probably should have tested this before. No, no, it's good, man. Camera. But see that. We, All right, now try and turn the wheel, Martin. Oh, look, I can't because the shoes are stopping it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And you know what else is cool about most drum brakes? They're self-adjusting. So as they wear, there's a little little ratchet thing in there that slowly pushes out and pushes the shoes closer and closer and closer so they always work. Yeah. Mm. So there it is. That is how they work. But Martin, I do believe you've got a box full of goodies. I do. So these are all the bits for our drum to disc conversion. I'm going to lay them out and I'm going to show you. Mad. Have you got a brake collar, Martin? What's that? I'm, I'm wearing a collar. Don't worry, keep going. You know when you put like these collars on dogs so they can't eat their own balls when they've had an operation on their testicles? Or on their legs or their feet or their neck? Oh, that's to uh, stop you from, is that to stop you from licking your own balls? Is that what you're saying? So here's what's mad about this setup, right? Yes. This is a rear brake setup to suit a Lancer. And now, a lot this is from another too sexy, isn't it? Well, a lot of manufacturers, they, you know they call them parts bin cars, Subaru do it as well, like to keep yeah. costs down, they just have certain kind of designs and whatever. And oh then, man, Skoda and Volkswagen and the Masters of it. Oh, it was awesome on Volkswagens five years ago, chuck it on the new Skoda. Yep. So, 
On this car, there's so many different combinations, which is kind of cool because you can pick and choose depending on what you want. So firstly, you can put Magna brakes on it. You can put FTO brakes on it. Um, you can put, well, the single Do piston like and twin piston. Uh, yeah, they're kind of cool. I reckon they're they're kind cool of cool engines in them. They're little. Yeah, I like, zippy. I like the idea like of them. Like a little flea. It's just that thing where if they whacked a turbo on it and made it like four-wheel drive, it would have been huge. Well, you could apply that to everything. That's true. Um, so like there's a bunch balls. of other things like Evo stuff will fit, but you've got to change you know, a bunch of things. So we're going for a, a fairly basic setup because we still want to keep our stud pattern, which is yes. 4 by 100 So this, basically, we pull off the drums and we put on these like holder collary things, which is what the calipers mount up to, like that. <laughs> Look at that, Martin. And then the discs, which I'll get. Are they all mad and disky? Oh, well, they're pretty old, oh, wow. but they'll do the job. These are actually, they're not worn, they've just been sitting around for a while because it's yep. a, one I bought second hand, um, which also means it's cheap. Yeah. Because you can go buy... How much was all of this? Like 300 bucks for the okay. lot, including the plates and the lines. There's brake lines on there, including a set of pads, which are pretty much new as well. So, to be clear, you could, you could run this car with drums and you could run it around the track and it'd, it'd probably be fine. Except ours don't work. Well, ours are busted. The adjusters don't work, so they won't adjust themselves over time, which means no brakes. And you just don't want to take, take risks with brakes. And if you're going to replace it anyway, like we always say, if you're going to be pulling it all apart to change it, make it better. you might as well upgrade it, particularly with a car like this, which again, the stuff is so cheap and so easy yep. and so simple that we can do it in like half an hour to an hour, I reckon. And just to steer people off at the pass, because they are going to go, oh, drum brakes are good, and they're going to list all these technical reasons about why they're better and why they're whatever. We don't actually refute any of that stuff. Mm. But on a track um, and under extreme conditions, this is probably going to cool more efficiently than drum brakes, which means our brakes will last longer before they fade. But That's we may right. actually do another episode on brake cooling as well at some stage. Yeah. Like a little DIY. And there's thing, a reason, I mean, made. there's a reason, especially, you know, maybe when this car was new, if you were able to say in the specifications, the four wheel disc brakes or four wheel disc brakes with ABS or whatever it People is. People knew it was a sports car. Well, it, it just, it was a, a selling point, right? So that's why this all this stuff bolts on. Like even um, Protons, which based a lot of their cars off Mitsubishi's designs, yep. um, they came with disc brakes as a selling point. So so a lot of the Proton stuff bolts on, which yep. is awesome. Like again, this kind of car for just parts bin and mixing and matching and doing it on the cheap, but really seeing big, big improvements. Except it came from the Lotus parts bin, didn't it? It was a bit of conversation from last time. I have no Proton idea. Proton Sartria by Lotus. All I know is we've got to rip off our drum brakes. Yep. And jam this on. The first thing you've got to do is jack up your car. I'm just going to put this jack stand in and then realise that there's an exhaust there now. <laughs> The old side exit, which is on the uh, on the uh, sidewalk side, Martin, which was kind of you. Well, that's the way that the exhaust bends sort of around the car anyway, so that's... So it's it, towards the people. It was either that or hot exhaust next to rubber fuel lines. Yeah. Which would have been exciting in its own way. Our rear wheels need to come off and the handbrake released so we can get our brake drum off. We're also pushing the foot brake down so we don't lose as much fluid when we disconnect brake lines later on. Next we need to pull apart the spring and clips that hold the brake shoes on the brake assembly. It's a shoe and that's the adjuster. Oh and that's the bit that's broken as well. So that little tab sits on there and it auto adjusts by this thing clicking up on that. But as you can see, that's worn and not working. And also the little tab on there is broken completely off, which means normally as they wear, this thing's going click, click, click and pushing the, the shoes out like that. Yeah. But because it's broken off, it's not pushing the shoes. Ah, oh, hence why you had no brakes. Yeah, or just brakes that don't, don't working properly. There's not much wear on the shoes themselves. They look exactly like brake pads actually. The material on them is very similar. The brake pad's got that much material, your drum shoe's got, you know, that much. But look at the surface area as well. You got that, double that actually, versus two yeah, of them. a lot more, isn't there? Yeah. The brake lines can be disconnected from the back of the pistons using a pipe spanner and the clips removed using pliers. Now, brakes and suspension are often very, very difficult to get apart. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is often to do with the tools you have. So. With one of those kind of normal regular spanners you'd find, you don't have a lot of leverage, meaning something that's done up really tight can beat you. Um, the easiest way to get around that is to get yourself a couple of long spanners. They may be useless sometimes because they're too big to get in, but if you've got something really tight and you can get one of these spanners on it, the amount of leverage that you get to crack that bolt will make all the difference and can be the difference between getting the job done 
or taking it to a mechanic or just being beaten and no one likes to get beaten by their car. We need to remove the bolt that holds the axle onto the hub. They are often very tight, so you may need to crack this with a long breaker bar while the wheel is still on the ground, or use a powerful rattle gun. The backing plate that mounts the brake piston and handbrake brackets has four 12mm bolts holding it onto the hub. We're lucky that in our case we can get factory parts that will fit this particular hub. If you're retrofitting non-standard parts, this is where you'll need to adapt to fit. For all the benefits of drum brakes, and what they do and cheaper to make and everything. Obviously manufacturers know that discs are better for cars that are gonna be possibly doing track days, right? Because if you look at uh, Rexy's STIs and stuff, yep. they've got disc brakes all the way around, yep. but some of the lower spec Subarus don't, right? That's like right. Just like just normal you, Imprezas? Yeah, if you get, I mean, I don't know what year it changed, but if you get like a base model Impreza, yeah. they still had rear drums. Yeah. You know, from Overseas they call them Impreza. Impreza. Which is, just makes me feel uncomfortable. It makes me feel like eating a pretzel. Next we can grease up the shaft and jam our wheel bearing back onto the axle. It's a good time to check to make sure it still spins freely without any grinding. The disc can then be slid on and the caliper installed. This breaks. A wire brush and brake cleaner takes any loose material off our disc, which can then be installed onto the hub. If you are buying second-hand discs, it can be a good idea to get them machined before installing them. Also make sure you check the minimum thickness, which is often printed on the inside of the disc. Next we need to put pads into the caliper and bolt it to the car, then connect up the brake lines. So with the brake lines wound in and the clips on, the factory line fits exactly to the same mounting spots as it did for the drum setup, although there isn't a hard line in this case. It's just the squidgy braided factory line. Now all we have to do is bleed the brakes and also run the handbrake cables, and that is done. Repeat the process for the other side. In our case, the calipers sit on the rear side of the disc. It's important to take note of how the calipers are positioned on the car that you get the kit from. It's a good idea to label everything when you remove them from the donor car. The bleeding ports should always face up so that air can be pushed up and out the top of the caliper when bleeding the brakes. The new brackets and backing plates go on using the new longer bolts. Next, the pistons in the rear calipers need to be pushed inwards to make room for the new thicker brake pads. In our case, it's wound in, but depending on the car, they can sometimes also be pushed in using a spreader tool. The caliper is then bolted onto the backing plate and the brake lines connected up. Next up, we're going to extract these old handbrake cables because the ends of them are different and the ones from the drums won't work on the disc brake setup. Also, the handbrake won't probably be as aggressive either because drum brakes, they do have that bigger surface area and a lot of clamp force, so they will reef that handbrake on really, really hard. Handbrakes are called emergency brakes because they should still function even when all hydraulic pressure is lost in the braking system due to a leak or a damaged line. It's important that it works properly. Handbrake cables run from the centre console down and under the rear seats and into the rear hubs to pull the brake pads onto the disc mechanically. So this, that there here is the old handbrake cable. Now it's basically just like a cable that you'd have on a go-kart mm -hmm. or on a push bike or, or one of those bike. old carby dildos. But basically this here is the spring that keeps it under tension and it's got this little dildo plug on the end here which is different too, Martin. The new cable, which is actually the same on that end, so it'll fit into our car, but you will notice it's a I'm slightly keep the length the same length. It's longer because the caliper is on the far side of the rotor rather than being closer. Yep. So it has to be a little bit longer, and then it's got a different thing here that hooks onto the brake calipers. And so instead of the, the caliper squeezing under hydraulic pressure, it's got another little lever on it that when it pulls, it pulls the pads onto the disc, which is why it's not as strong as the drum brake as well, because the yep. drum brake, as I said before, has a lot more surface area. Exactly. So this is like just pinching a little thing. Um, but that means we will have a working handbrake, which is important. Mad. Should we pump this through, Martin? We should pump it through. Let's do it. It's a bit tricky with the grommet on that end, yeah. isn't it? You gotta do it from underneath and then poke it up into the, the front. So Let's I'll, do I'll it. poke it up into your face. Okay. I think, Marty, it's probably going to be easier to stick it in if you grease up the actual rim first. Yeah, I'll grease it up. I'm going to roll right down underneath to where the hole is. Yeah. And roll, like, and then I'm going to kind of jam my hand there as much as I can. Yeah. If um, you stick your fingers in, when I see your fingers coming through the hole, I'll know that the, the rest of the, the shaft of the cable is coming sure. through. Sure. It's got a rubber on it. Okay. Um, so that should help. I'm going to shine a light on it so you, can, so you know where to stick it. All right, cool. I think... Can you oh, feel yep. it? I can see the end of the knob coming through now. If you stick your finger on the greasy part, yep. 
and then the rubber will come through after that. Oh, it's wet, isn't it? It is, yeah. All right, if you keep pushing, the tip's in there at the moment, but yep. can you push the rest of it through? Yeah, yeah, I just got to... I've got to grab it right around the sort of shaft of the... Hold on. The way that I'm sitting, I can't get it all the way through. I'm just going to get on my knees and put both hands around it and just yep. pull. Yep, so it's going, to come, it's going to come out much faster now. Yeah, yeah. Pull it, pull it real hard, man. That's the way. The rubber's really stretching, man, because it's tight on the hole. Did you, say, did you lube it up or not? Uh, I, I did a little bit. Oh, the whole thing just came through. Oh, shit. No, that's no good. That's more than you need, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Hold um, on. I'll push it back out you again. You might have to jam it back out. <laughs> yep. Yep, see if you can jam it through. Well, you might need to pull it out before you stick it in again. Oh, the whole thing? Well, pull I can't get the rubber back in the hole unless you pull the shaft out first. So do you need me to pull the whole the whole thing completely out? Or yeah, no? because the whole thing, the, the the rubber has fallen off inside. All right, I'm going to pull it. And it's, hold on you, a sec. I've I got my see, fingers wrapped around the base of it now. Wait I can see the, the rubber starting to push through. Yeah, Wait that's on, it. the rubber is now... Is that seated? It's all over the greased up rim. Yeah. Hold on, it's nah, in. Perfect, yep, that's man. it. Keep that's the rubber there. Now push the shaft all the I'm going to put my hand around the base. Now push as hard as you can. I did. Yep, I'm pushing. Keep going, man. Yep, I'm pushing. No, no, I need more. Oh, that's it. Yep, it's, it's coming out in my hand now. It needs to go a little bit more. Hold on, the hold, rubber's slipping through the hold hole Hold the again, rubber with one hand which while is you a, pull, it, pull it through with the that's other. That's a good idea. I'll, I've got my fingers around the base, and now I'll just pull the shaft. Push from your end. Yep, pushing. Oh, there's a big chunk coming out, man. Yeah, that's, that's lined up perfectly on my end, mate. Okay, cool. That's now in. Great, because this bracket looks like it lines up perfectly. With the handbrake cables installed and the brackets positioned properly and tightened up, we can move on to bleeding the brakes. It's a useful skill to service standard brakes and required when you've disconnected part of your brake system. First up, we top up the master cylinder with good quality brake fluid and then start at the caliper furthest away. As the new fluid is pumped through, watch for air bubbles and when you've got a clear stream of fluid coming out of the bleeder nipple, you're good to go. Make sure you test the brakes before you get back onto the road. If you're at all unsure about how to do this, make sure you check with a qualified mechanic. Smashed it, man. Yeah. Freaking awesome. And now I think we are ready for our first track shakedown with what was once a sex spec panty dropping undie bursting show car yeah to now a tire frying lap destroying monster with functional modifications yeah yeah i think it's all about the functional modifications i'm all for a nice looking vehicle but I that's like well yeah i am actually Never really supergrams looks cool it's all gray and matte and painted and looks matte this would look all matte all painted <laughs> that's up that's one it? example of the cars you've owned that looks good yes yeah, no, but that's cool. I think it's really cool to be able to get parts off a slightly better model. Yeah. That means you can upgrade using factory parts, meaning you know it's going to fit, you know it's going to work. You're not like guessing about whether something's been machined properly. Yeah. It just goes hadunk and works. That's awesome, man. Mm. So next time on Mighty Car Mods, we're going to be heading to find a bit of like track time. Yeah. Or a bit of, bit of concrete. Yeah. Or a tennis court. Somewhere to something. go for a mad thrash. Somewhere a to go for court. a mad skid. I don't know, whatever you're into. So there it is. Mighty Car Mods, forward slash Facebook. The other way around, facebook.com forward slash the balls. There it is, Mighty Car Mods. And as a special treat for you, Martin, look what I've got for you, mate. Are you ready? Yeah. A delicious little treat. There you go. Twiglets. Oh, twiglets. They're like meaty explosions. Yeah. Literally, you put them in your mouth and they like explode with their meatiness. Correct. It's awesome.